Peterson is a seven-time Pro Bowler, but isn't currently on an NFL roster. However, he's got an idea of where he should play next year. Say what? Obviously, I, I've mentioned Houston a couple times. Um, you know, I feel like Green Bay wouldn't be a bad look as well. Um, Carolina. Uh, I, there's some options out there. You know, Miami, down there in St. Louis. Uh, that would be a nice look, too, with, uh, with Ty Gurley. <laughs> St. Louis is the no punchline there. Because they are now <laughs> Los Angeles. But that's a hard one for me to mock too much because I feel like I've turned into my father. Where the Baltimore Colts were the Baltimore Colts, even though forever. they've been in Indy forever. Yeah. And then Chargers of San Diego, man. That's that be the San Diego time. Chargers in my head for a long time. I mean, I was shocked by the Todd Gurley. Forget putting him in the right city. Like, I mean, it's not, there's no great running back that wants to play with Todd Gurley. I mean, I mean, reps you're going to get. He couldn't get any reps in New Orleans with, with Iggy, you know. Like, right. he, I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Real but also, he mentioned like 13 teams. Right, he was. He's like, let me just. List. He said, now I've mentioned all those. There's got to be some teams and over here that I can mention. Were they all, except for Green Bay, warm weather? I heard Miami. <laughs> I heard Houston. I heard he said St. Louis, but when they were St. Louis, they were in a dome, so that is warm weather. Yep. Now Los Angeles, warm weather. He's looking for, for work. He's putting out yeah, videos every day. Yeah. yeah, he is. I mean, he's gonna. This guy will be in good shape forever. Like he'll always look like football player shape, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, him and Jenna be competing for videos. Right, exactly. Your words, right. not mine. Yeah, he's not the middle age yet. Okay, we took it too far. We were having a good time and we took it too far. Time for some stories to start your morning. Not that funny, Nick. Brought to you by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. The Chargers are searching for a new tight end after losing Hunter Henry for the year. One candidate, former Charger, Antonio Gates. Team released him earlier this offseason. Philip Rivers says it would get my vote to bring Gates back. CC, should the Chargers bring back Antonio Gates? And now, fans, I know you watch a lot of football. Antonio Gates has been a great player, but this is full speed. This is not slow motion. <laughs> this is Antonio Gates. <laughs> yeah, these are, this is him. This is full speed. You know, you watch the high school videos and the kids have it sped up so they look a lot faster. Yeah. No, this one's not <laughs> sped down. This is real time. Of course, he would be in addition to the locker room, very familiar with the quarterback. But what they were trying to do was get faster and younger at the position. Yes, an injury makes you look at someone like him, but they still need to get a guy who's undersized, who can run and stretch the middle of the field. I think it's fair to say they wouldn't have cut ties with Antonio Gates when they did if Hunter Henry wasn't on the team. It was about getting faster. It was also, we want to feature this young future star as much as possible. Yeah. So now they have information they didn't have then, which is that he's gone. Now maybe you still need to add speed to it, but this would have been the first phone call I made when I found out Hunter Henry's knee was blown, was I would have called I'm him. I'm a little Antonio concerned Gates. though. He got suspended before last season for four games That's for performance enhancing drugs. It's a good point. All right, to the NBA draft now. Villanova star Dante DiVincenzo will enter the draft. He was named the Final Four's most outstanding player when he scored 31 points in the national title game. Nick, what do you think? of DiVincenzo as a pro prospect? I, just, I think this is a great story. This is a guy that was on no one's radar to come out this year, was extraordinary in the Final Four, particularly the national championship game, and then blew everyone away with the athletic testing at the combine. That Listen, the, the knock on a player such as DiVincenzo typically is, is he going to be a good enough athlete to defend? And he is a good enough athlete to defend. No, he's a great athlete. He's a great athlete. Yeah, and you, so you know basketball, you know that he is a, a great athlete. But just like last year's rookies, we saw them struggle. Guys who were stars, premier players in college basketball. This guy was a sixth man on a great team. Let's just slow down, though, once he gets to the NBA and let him develop. He was only a sophomore. Still very, very young. I think going to be a very good NBA player. All right, Sixers head coach Brett Brown signed a contract extension yesterday amidst all the Twitter stuff. Brown has been the head coach in Philly since 2013. Sixers were 52-30 and 30 this year with him. Nick, 
good move for Philly? I think it is. I think that he's proven himself as, at the very least, an above-average NBA coach. Those are hard to come by. I know that people thought he got outcoached by Brett Stevens in the second round of the playoffs, but that's not enough for me to not want him back. And in the NBA, you don't have coaches on lame, lame duck years. He had one year left, so you yeah. either fire him or you extend him. I think they made the right choice. They made the right choice, and you can see it in their players. Are their younger players developing? Yes, you got to give the coach credit. This is a great defensive team. It's hard to get NBA players to play defense. He has them playing great defense in Philadelphia with a young team. Yes, let's move on with him. I believe he is the guy on the sideline when they win a championship. All right, finally, both Andre Iguodala and Kevin Love's status for game one still unknown. Love remains in the concussion protocol while Iggy is still rehabbing from a knee injury he suffered in game three. Chris, which player is more important to his team's success in the finals? I mean, my goodness, how many times is Kevin Love going to be the, the answer to a question? I mean, what, what is LeBron going to do without him? I mean, they don't have a bench. You bring Jeff Green off their bench to as a starter. No, they need Kevin Love. Golden State's a small team. Kevin Love should be made for playing against the Warriors. But, I mean, even if he does play, he's a liability defensively. I mean, they're going to pick, switch until they get Kevin Love in the situation, and then they're going to yo-yo him to death for four games. So Kevin Love is the most important. The only way this series can be extended is if Kevin Love has a great series. What's so interesting about your answer, because I agree with you, by the way, I Iggy's the fifth most important player on the Warriors and Love's the second most important player on the Cavs. So to me, it's a simple answer. But is you answered Kevin Love instantly, and is it fair to say Kevin Love's the guy since LeBron's gone back to Cleveland that has been most frustrating for you, that's been most disappointing for you after watching him in Minnesota, after seeing the player, because I know you have ties to that franchise because of your time with the Vikings, like seeing who he was as a Timberwolf and seeing who he's been with or without Kyrie as a cat. Right. It's one of those free agency things that now you get a guy on your team and you watch him 82 games and you realize, wow, he's not that guy. But it's also, anytime you get a player who's dominant on a losing team, you need to be aware of what you're getting. Because most of the time, you're not getting 25 and 12. You're getting the best team, best player on a, in a losing situation. A lot of the games are out of hand. So he can build those big stats. But how good of a basketball player is he when he plays with other great players? And to me, that was Kevin Love coming from Minnesota, going to the cat. Not athletic. You wonder, how did he get all those rebounds? Wow, he's not as athletic as I thought he would be. I thought he would be a better shooter than he was, especially playing with the type of shooters that he's playing with. I mean, I thought that at, you could rely on Kevin Love to occasionally give you a 30-point game, right. like a 15-point quarter. No, and they run, especially the first quarters, in four years, they run most of the offense through Kevin Love. They give him an opportunity to get started and get a fast start more than any other player on Cleveland's roster. So very disappointed in Kevin Love and what I've seen. Can I give over. Kevin Love just a little bit of leeway? Think about the year that he had. He had the whole mental breakdown and came out and talked about his mental illness. He had the broken hand. He had a concussion. He got banged around and knocked around a lot. Does any of that factor into his production it, now? It would factor in if we hadn't seen the three years prior. That I would, if this was an outlier year and you're like, oh, okay, he dealt with the loss of his grandmother, he talked about mental health publicly, he broke his hand and now he's in with a concussion, that if it were an outlier year, then yes, it would. The problem is Kevin Love's been on the trade block since the moment he got to Cleveland. Why? Because he's underachieved. Because you got to remember, when LeBron went back there, Kevin Love was a more established star in this league than Kyrie Irving was. Both of those guys were guys who would put up big numbers on bad teams, but Love had been an All-NBA player. Kyrie hadn't. Like, Love had done more in this league. Kyrie ascended. Kyrie took advantage of the time with LeBron as well as any Robin to his Batman could have. Kevin Love didn't. He had the harder role as the third option, but then this year, when he was second option, except for those first 20 games of the year, he never got to being the guy that we think his talent dictates that he could have been. Yeah, I, I'm not in the business of making excuses. I mean, we can make a list of excuses for every pro athlete if we want to. It's about, do you get the job done? That's what they pay you for. 
It's not college. It's not high school. It's professional, and the expectations are of that. Kevin Love has not delivered that in Cleveland. I think if Kevin Love was being honest with himself, Kevin Love would feel the same way. At this point in his career, you would think Kevin Love would be a better basketball player than what he is. All right, let's move on to the Rockets now. Still looking their wounds 